You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This is episode number seven called Using Keys to Identify Plants. In this episode, I discuss the different keys or methods which have been devised to help identify plants. I invite you to visit identifythatplant.com for more plant identification resources and information. There are so many ways to categorize and group plants. Given the thousands of plants that exist, it's quite a challenge to develop a scheme to work for all those plants. A variety of ways to group plants have been tried, with centuries of observation, comparison of plants, and discussion among plantsmen and botanists. Today, we still have a number of methods or keys for determining a plant's identity or name. This becomes evident when you look at different field guides. When we want to identify a plant, it's helpful to have a process for quickly narrowing down and eliminating most of the possible plants to a much smaller set. This is done by grouping plants with similar characteristics. Thus, we eliminate the majority of plants which do not have the same set of characteristics and are left with a smaller group to study and compare with our unknown plant. I'd like to share with you some of the ways a field guide might group plants for easier identification. The first method is the one which initially appealed to me the most when I began identifying plants. Using photographs and grouping by color. Wildflowers of the Smokies is an example of this method. Each wildflower is placed with others of a similar color, white, yellow, orange, red, and so on. The National Audubon Society Field Guide to Wildflowers expands on this method. The wildflowers are grouped first by their color and then within that color, they are grouped by the flower's overall shape. Radially symmetrical, daisy-like, rounded cluster, etc. The Peterson Field Guide for Wildflowers also groups flowers by color. However, this field guide primarily uses black and white line drawings of the flowering plant, rather than photographs. Another typical plant identification method is the dichotomous key used in Fern Finder. This key presents an either-or type of question to be answered for each possible defining characteristic of the plant. For example, if the blade is divided, go to page 11. And if the blade is not divided, go to the next question below. Then, based on the answer to this first question about the fern's leafy frond, you proceed to the next appropriate question, which also presents an either this or that response. After following the thread through all the questions and answers, you will, hopefully, have the one plant which matches the plant you were looking for. Another great example of a field guide using a dichotomous key is woody plants of the southeastern United States. The Shrub Identification Book uses a pictorial key. By matching the plant you are trying to identify with the photos of five types of plant parts, you can determine the identity of your unknown plant. The plant parts which are photographed and displayed in this book include leaves, flowers, fruit, twigs, and bark. There is another method of plant identification, which is referred to as a polyclave or random access key. This works well with a computer database of plants and their characteristics. You select a variety of characteristics related to grasses, for example. Then, when you submit your search request, the computer looks throughout its database for all the plants which match all the characteristics you have checked off. This holistic method of plant identification can be found at an increasing number of internet sites, some of which are listed at identifythatplant.com. Look in the section called Plant ID Resources. Newcomb's Wildflower Guide sorts plants based on a key which asks for a determination of the type of flower, the type of plant, and the type of leaf. The combined answer to these three plant part types points you to the pages within the book where you can look through a smaller group of illustrations and descriptions to identify your unknown plant. 
And here's one more method which is probably the least useful grouping for someone just beginning to identify plants. Wildflowers of North Carolina presents photos and descriptions of plants in a numerical order, based on the coding in the Manual of the Vascular Flora of the Carolinas. What type of key is used in your favorite field guide? I invite you to respond at identifythatplant.com. Look for the blog post titled, Using Keys to Identify Plants. Also, complete a brief survey at the end of that blog post and let me know what you would be most interested in learning more about as you practice identifying plants. I encourage you to sign up for the Tidbits email list at identifythatplant.com so you can continue your connection and learning with us. Visit identifythatplant.com for more plant identification resources and information about how you can confidently master these skills of correct plant identification. You've been watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire.